Hi everybody, Daniel Kenny here from Mad About Snooker. I am super excited to say that I finally did it. The 167, you could call it the Saudi Golden Break or whatever you want to call it. But uh, yeah, a Mr. Uh, Mr. Michael Holt beat me to it by a couple of days. Annoyed with that, but I knew that if I didn't do it the last time that I was going to do it, he was going to be the first one to do it. He's the only one that really has that sort of uh, class to actually do it. Uh, that quickly after it's just you know been shown to the whole world what it's all about so congrats on the break it was a really really well constructed one and uh the funny thing is about this break that you're going to see now is i'm basically landing exactly the same on the black a little bit too straight on it and have to power it up towards the yellow but i take another approach to how i get up there because the cushions we have on this table is not really a star they're not as pingy or as bouncy even though they're steel blocks, they do seem like they bounce a little bit too soft, so had to take a different approach to it. But let's just take a look at a break and uh, let's see how I basically do it. So I'll be analyzing alongside, starting out here with a good long red. I'm puffing there because it's like my 20th attempt today or something to try and do it. Had some really good splits, uh, but never really managed to get above 13 reds, 13 blacks. I think I had 114, yeah, 114 reds, 14 blacks, and then I messed up a positional shot on a red, uh, or the black or something, I can't remember. It was, it was, it was a bit hazy, first off. But I started out good here, red and black, and a red on the cushion, and uh, Mr. Yusuke there in the background, a new player we have in the club, who's just cleared his first colors a couple of days ago. Congratulations with that. We've uh, been working on his game to try and actually uh, shorten his bridge hand because it used to be something like 35, 40 centimeters, way too much. Shorten it down a bit by about 10 centimeters and that's actually improved him quite a lot. So first split on the pack here. Um, and I've got to say, I was surprised how well they split and how few of the balls are actually in the way of each other here. A little unfortunate to land that straight on the black, so I really have to power this one with like half a tip or one tip of left hand spin to just get it around. Like I say, the cushions are a little bit softer than the stars. Um, cloth here, 6811 tournament. It's playing a wee bit slow because this is a humid, humid club. And uh, yeah, it's just you've got to power and punch a little bit more. Although these floaty shots still look fairly okay. Uh, the table has been fitted by a German guy called Timo and he's done a really wonderful job with it. Making sure the blacks are going straight to the corners when you slow roll them and all that. So you can really trust the table there and to the middles and that's what I care about really. So props to Timo for that. Land a little bit short here, but I knew that the red was going to go past the pink and the red into the center pocket. And I was just looking whether or not I could take that bottom one just below the pack of four. It was just a little bit too low on the cue ball there. So I'm taking this one into the center pocket and try to keep a high angle on the black every time. That's that's really my main goal for when I when I do maxis and try and, and create those breaks. Um, and something people will maybe notice with my technique is that I am doing a little bit of a, the old Jimmy White thing, aiming lower. And then as I shoot the shot, I actually hit a tiny bit higher on the cue ball. So I look like I'm aiming really low sometimes, and then I'm still doing a stun shot. Just part of my technique. It's not something I can uh, actually mend. I've tried and failed. So I'm just gonna keep it as it is. I'm happy with it. Stun this up pretty much a little bit above center. Half a tip of right hand spin to just check it off the cushion. Table very slidey still. I um, was thinking about that red for a second into the green pocket, but I could see obviously that there was going to be no easy position on the black. So I was just looking th through like the different solutions. There would be a few shots ahead while he was taking a shot. I didn't want to argue or anything like say, can you please wait until I've done the break or anything? Because what if I wasn't going to make the break? Uh, so basically just, you know, compose myself a couple of times extra. And it's a good thing actually he's uh, he's in the way because it actually manages, it, it makes me manage to actually look a few times more on some of the shots that I was maybe contemplating what I should do and there was a wrong solution. So in that I was actually quite lucky. 
I was waiting for him to finish here and I was just composing myself, making sure to still keep focus on the break, of course. Um, and there I realize I had just had enough room to pop the straight red and follow through on that one. And I must say, with some of the splits I had today, I felt really unlucky with how the outcome was. But with this particular break, I got lucky enough on a couple of the splits that there's hardly any problems. The red just below the pink actually goes into the left corner when the other one is removed just below it. So just looking at whether or not I could get up there or if I was going to go all the way back towards the one just above the pink, the pink, I should say. I think that was what I was trying to do and then I slightly overrun it. And then I think I still actually take that one below the pink because I felt like that would free up the spacing around the pink spot and just try and be able to keep myself on the black. So it could be a maxi and then possibly the golden break. Landed almost straight on this one. I think I had to reverse it a tiny bit with right hand spin. Yeah, just a tiny bit, good grip on it. And I get a nice gap there. Now, choice of two, but I do feel that this one was the right one. I'm near straight on the red into the center pocket, but it was just going to make me drift away from the black too much. And uh, I was going to have to rely with a lot of left hand spin to get back on it if it was that one I was picking. Uh, here I've landed pretty okay on the black. I think I came up with a top spin, right hand spin solution here to go around the angles. Tried again to land on the one just below the pink. just about got on it. So this means once I remove that one, it's really about just keeping tight position and then not making any silly mistakes like, you know, leaving yourself too straight on a black or something like that. But here I decided actually to take the one um, there next to uh, the cue ball, closer to the cue ball first. I just felt like that could be in the way of me moving around for the reds. And I felt like that red just below the pink actually wasn't gonna be a problem. And as you see, I've landed perfect on it here. Low right on the cue ball to get up there. And it's so nice to have a level table now, like at least the last three slates here are so level that I totally trust the pace of it. So as for a practice table, this is perfect. It's a Chinese table, but it is very good for what it is. Inside English here, lots of left hand spin. Got a bit of a bounce off the cushion, probably because I hadn't cleaned the table for six or seven frames or something like that. And you should really do it after every four, we know. But stopped just in time. Right into the center pocket, still too straight. And I felt like I couldn't get back for the black there. So even though this is the top of pot, it gives the ideal position, so you got to be able to recognize that you should uh, you should take that shot, even though it's a little bit more difficult. If it's four, let's say a chance for the one four seven. Pots are clean, and here I see quite quickly that there is a good opportunity to get in an area of two. That's the main rule, like Henry said to Neil back in the day. Basically, you you're building it. A, bit too much like an amateur leaving yourself for just one red try and leave yourself an area of two or three that makes it so much easier to build the brakes and that's exactly what I did here if I came too high for the one into the center pocket then I was always going to have the red that's uh, to the right of the pink and that's the one I take so let's see I think I'm stunning this one into the cushion a little bit of uh, top spin in the end I think it is ends up being halfway top spin, yeah. So pretty much perfect on the black here. Um, you don't really see it here, but there is actually a little bit of an angle, so I can just stun it. But I thought I might land too short if I just stun it directly, so I'm just stunning it off the cushion. That way I felt it was gonna be safe for me to have a positive angle from the red to get back for 
the black again and I've just about managed it with half a tip of right hand spin I think it was just off straight and if I play this as a stun screw not complete backspin it's gonna float nicely down on a new cloth to the black just like that some would say that's a little bit high on the black but at least with this one even though it's a missable shot I feel like if you hit the cue ball correctly, there's no way that the cue ball is gonna run away from you. It's gonna land absolutely plumb on the yellow. And I remember I've landed exactly like I want it to. Check this out. Rounding two cushions. Just grabs with the extra spin there. Although that looks like a thin angle, it's absolutely perfect. Center ball hit, slow hit on the yellow. By the way, if anybody knows how, if there is a place where you can buy these uh, spray colored golden balls, let me know. If, if not, I've got to make one myself so I can make some more breaks with that. See if I can find an old set of balls with uh, a yellow ball that could be made into a golden ball. One, six, seven ball. So this one, I slightly under hit and I leave myself in a position I don't really like to play the brown. I'm actually much more comfortable with having a straight in shot on the brown usually with backspin to land on the same side as where I am now on my right side there. So I overcook it slightly here and you can see my, my expression obviously say I'm, I know that I've messed it up a little bit. Dead straight on the blue, possibly even with a tiny, tiny negative angle going away from the pink. So just composing myself again knowing at least that the pink is a little bit above its spot is going to help me in completing the break here. So do a little bit of backspin, land about where the cue ball is now. A little bit further back than that. Perfect for a stun shot. And the only thing you've got to remember here is don't land straight on the back, of course. And that's nearly what I do. Floats down nicely, but from memory, when I'm looking at this, this is almost exactly the way that Michael landed, where he did it with loads of left-hand spin and stun it hard in. I just know that the cushions are not that good in um, on this table compared to a star. They're a little bit dead compared to that. So I knew my only chance to get for the yellow was really to do this low right, five o'clock on a cue ball, all the juice in the world. You see my cue vibrating there because of all the spin the side impact on the cue and I've managed to land that straight on it my reaction says it all that's scary that's a scary shot but compose myself deep breath and got it only took two weeks almost yeah it took me two weeks I will say that was a really fun, fun break to make uh, because there wasn't really any props in it, problems in it compared to some of the other breaks that I've done and some of the other attempts where it actually looked a bit more risky. I had some uh, really crazy shots in the 147 where I missed the position for the yellow last week when I tried to do it during the Saudi tournament. Uh, and as per those, you know, bad positional shots are probably in the end took it a little bit like being perfect on the black like I was last week and I was like perfect I can't mess this up and then of course I messed it up so that's a thought that shouldn't really creep into your mind when you're doing a break like that so really happy with the maxi here but even happier that it looked almost as easy in terms of like the path going around um, going around a black spot and stuff like that and not not having to worry too much about bridging over stuff or really having to work too hard with it. So I just think that's a really, really well constructed break um, without too many issues. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Obviously, I know that it's a it's it's a break that is dividing fans. I know that a lot of people see it as total blasphemy. I know people say that it's whitewashing the sport or what was it called, sports washing with uh, the prize money that's so heavy there compared to what uh, the UK themselves can actually do and worlds do themselves can produce for the home nations and stuff but to be fair if somebody's willing to put up that money and knowing that a lot of the lower ranked players are struggling then we need more tournaments like that so actually 
top 32 and top 64 can get those money chances. So I don't actually see it as a bad thing, the whole uh, Saudi golden break. I see it as a fun thing and an entertaining thing. And also I see it as an opportunity to uh, create something new, a bit like Power Snooker when that came through or um, the shootout. And, and honestly, we know what the shootout is like and we know that it's best of one and everybody has a chance of, of, of getting far if they're just a little bit lucky, you know, on the day. Um, you also, you, you see so many new talents to get a chance on the television uh, and, and, and on the TV table, I, I was about to say. So I think all of these new things that World Snooker is trying should be taken with a grain of salt before you start actually complaining about it too much because it could benefit the sport in the end be it sports washing or too heavy price money in the Middle East and stuff like that. I do feel that people need to take a chill pill before complaining about it too much because in the reality, nine out of 10 frames, that 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 ball was gone after three or four shots. You put, you put a red and a pink and then that ball from the cushion underneath the brown, it's gone, it's off the table. So. It's not that much blasphemy, really. It's just a bit of entertainment, and it's only one tournament. Some people are reacting as if it's something that's going to take over the whole snooker scene, and every tournament is going to have that little golden ball. It's not. They're not going to mess with that. Snooker is snooker. A 147 is a 147. But if you can make a 167, then why not? In one tournament. Just leave it at, at that, you know. That's what I want to say. Hope you guys enjoyed this break, and... Uh, I'll be heading to Sarajevo, like so many other players already have, and I'll be sitting tonight and watching a little bit on YouTube and actually seeing them sweating, um, really getting through it in the juniors and also in uh, the Q Tour playoffs. Uh, Florian Nussler today had a really nice victory against uh, Craig Stedman, a great ex-pro, and uh, congratulations to Florian for that. So yeah, I'll be looking at YouTube to watch all them great matches on WPBSA and uh, the EBSA. Uh, users there so go and check those out by the way the European Championships have started but for the men's it starts on the 18th I'll be flying down there on the 17th the day before to have a little bit of a practice and get myself acclimatized with the venue it looks really really good Rasson tables super fine cloth new 1G balls what more can you ask for so yeah if you're in Sarajevo Bosnia Herzegovina Come down and watch it. If not, watch it on YouTube. It's going to be one hell of a tournament. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you as soon as I'm home, possibly on some lives, shorts on the Mad About Snooker channel on YouTube while in Sarajevo. Have a good one. Bye.